So here is a very interesting interview question. Uh, this is related to deep neural networks and back propagation. And the question here is as follows. While training a deep neural network, again, the keywords here are important. Why not initialize all the weights to the same value? Remember, this is something that we have discussed in the course videos, right? So we say we clearly explain why we clearly explained that we do random weight initializations. We also discussed what happens if I initialize all the weights to the same constant value. This is something that we have discussed in the course videos because uh, because I prefer personally when I teach, I prefer asking these hard why questions because it is only through understanding why something is done or why something is not done. Do we understand the concept in depth again? There are, there are a huge spectrum of interview questions that you will encounter. The simplest questions are what, right? Like what is back propagation, right? What is random weight initialization? Those are the simplest questions. How is also sometimes simple. Like how do you do random weight initialization? That's a simple question. Typically in interview questions, the hardest questions are the whys because they make you think they test how deep you know a concept. Right. Again, my favorite interview questions are mostly the whys. Right. Again, if you look at uh, top product based companies, these are the types of questions that you will encounter. Right. So, OK, let's let's tackle this question again. This question has been covered in the course videos, but in the interest of everyone, I'm just repeating this here. Right. So I hope the question is clear. Right. Why don't we all the weights that you have in a deep neural network? Why don't we just initialize all of them to a same value? Let's say a constant C. Why do we do random weight initialization where all the weights are initialized randomly and they're different from one another very often because we're doing random initialization. Good question, right? So now, now let's see. Let's see again. You can easily answer this question if you understand back propagation, if you understand how deep neural networks itself works, right? So it's not a rocket science question. It's a simple question which is testing your understanding of back propagation and deep neural networks. OK, so let's take let's take this simple again, a very simple neural network. I have three inputs again. My XI is my input again. My data set here consists of XI's and YI's right. So let's just assume that XI is a three dimensional vector right. YI is let's say binary class label right. So I have my inputs. I'm sending these inputs to two neurons right. They have their own activation functions. Let's just assume it is sigmoid or relu whatever activation function they have right. So all these three inputs go to these two neurons again these two neurons do a weighted sum again there are weights associated with each of these connections right and then uh, the outputs of these neurons are again connected to a third third neuron here this neuron also sends an output that output is let's say y hat and then I have a loss function here which is a loss between the y i hat which is predicted by the model and the actual y i which is the true class label this this is so typically like a softmax or a logistic loss right. And then I have back propagation wherein I adjust all these weights based on the derivative of this loss. Right? Very simple, very simple here. Again, I'm taking a simple example so that it's easier for us to understand. Right. So now let's assume, let's assume that the all weights are constant. So let's assume this weight is C, this weight is C. Let's just assume that all the weights in the neural network are constant. Let's just assume that. Now let's see what happens. Look at this. I send this input. Again, I could be doing a batch SGD or something like that, but I'll take a simple case where I'm just sending one input, right? So when I send an input, what happens? I compute what is the value that what is the input here? It is C into X I one C into X I two C into X I three goes as the input. The same input is also going to go to the neuron two because the weights are the same. Look at this. All these weights are the same. The input is the same. So what do I do? You do a weight multiplied by this input, right? weight plus weight multiplied by this weight multiplied by this we send it as the input to this neuron. So the input that is going into this neuron is the same as the input that is going into this neuron because all the weights are the same here right which means the outputs from these neurons is also going to be same here I'm assuming that both of them have the same activation function right. So the outputs is also same now that output is going to be multiplied with this this output is going to be multiplied with this becomes an input here and then I get an output here. Right now, how do these weights change again? I have a bunch of weights in this. Look at this. I have a bunch of weights here and I have a bunch of weights here. OK, so these are all weights in the same uh, in the same layer connection. These are all the weights in the uh, in the same layer connection. Right now, how do these weights get updated? Right. 
So we know this again, I'm using a simple SGD update given any weight at time in iteration T is nothing but weight in iteration T minus one minus my learning rate. Again, I'm using simple SGD here, very simple SGD. Again, there are other variations where the learning rate itself changes over time and it is per, per weight dependent. I'm not going to add a grad, add them, all of that. I'm taking the simplest case and I have the partial derivative of W of sorry, partial derivative of the loss with respect to W at T minus one. This is something, this is your standard SGD update, right? This is something that we have discussed in the optimization part of our course. Again, we also discussed this in deep learning in lots of detail. Now look at this. Okay. So, so if I want to update any weight, look at this, if I want to update this weight and this weight, right? Now, how do I update this weight? I have to compute this derivative, the, the, the derivative of loss with respect to this weight. Let's just say this weight is W11. Let's just say this weight is W32 because it is connecting the third input to the second neuron, right? Now what happens? See, initially both W11 and W32, both of them are the same because I initialized everything to the same constant. Now the update also will be the same because all the weights are the same here. When I compute this derivative, look at this, when I compute this derivative, the derivative of the loss with respect to W for all the neurons in this layer, this derivative will also be the same. And since the previous value is also the same, look at this, because all of these values were the same, right? Because I initialized everything to the same value, what's happening? My W11 at second iteration and my W32 in the second iteration are going to be the same. So what happens? All my weights are going to change. So since I initialized everything into the same constant, they'll keep changing and they'll remain the same here. Again, these weights and these weights may not be the same because the derivative, because the do L by do W for these weights is different from the do L by do W for these weights. Because for these weights, you just have one activation here. For these weights, there is an activation which goes as an input and there is one more activation here, right? So all these, all these weights are going to change exactly the same way over my iterations. Similarly, all these weights are going to change the same way. They're, see, initially they are C, all of this, all these are C, all these are C. Later on, what happens? They all will become C ones. All these will become some constant. All these will become C two. So what happens? So again, you might say, okay, what is wrong with that? What, ha what is wrong with all my weights in any given layer? Again, this is, this is connecting my input layer to the first layer. What is wrong if all these weights are the same? What's wrong with it? Now there is one major problem with this. Imagine if all these weights are the same, whatever this neuron is learning, the same thing this neuron is also learning, which is detrimental because we want each neuron to learn a different aspect of our inputs, right? That's the core idea, right? What is the purpose of deep neural networks? Each of these neurons is going to learn a different aspect of my inputs and I'm going to combine them as I go into deeper and deeper layers. Now what's happening? Because all these weights are the same, whatever this neuron is learning, the same thing this neuron is also learning. And because of the way we have set up the problem in backprop, right? Because, because of this derivative being same for all these weights, right? Because my activation functions are same, they all are in the same layer. So what happens now? All these will change in step from one iteration to other iteration, which means the, whatever this neuron is learning, the same thing this neuron is also learning. So all the neurons in the layer are learning exactly the same which is beating the whole purpose, okay? So the reason we don't initialize, this is very important. The reason we don't initialize if all, the, all the neurons in a given layer or in the whole network to the same is because we want to break symmetry. Like again, this is a term that you can encounter in many research papers and textbooks of deep neural networks. The concept here is what is symmetry here? Whatever this neural network is learning, the same thing this neural network is also learning. That's what symmetry means. And we don't want that. We want each, uh, sorry, uh, whatever this, act, this neuron is learning, not neural network. Whatever this neuron is learning and whatever this neuron is learning, we want them to be slightly different. Okay, we want them to be slightly different so that we, are, we, we have the power of the deep neural network wherein this is learning something slightly different from this. And thereby, when I, when I increase the depth of the model, these two are learning slightly different stuff, which will become input to the next act, to the next neuron, which is going to learn both these aspects together, right? So if, if I have all the weights to be the same, 
I have run into the problem of symmetry, which is all the neurons in the layer are learning exactly the same thing. And we don't want that. Again, breaking symmetry might sound like a fancy term, but even if you don't know this term, you can figure out this problem very easily if you just know the basics of how, how updates happen, the basics of uh, backpropagation, nothing else here, right? It's a very simple problem, very easy problem. But remember, in interview questions, why is often uh, questions which involve why or why not are typically uh, more challenging and more thought-provoking than what is something or how is something done. Those are easier.